Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to generate wind loads according to the ASCE 7 Main Wind Force Resisting System. In this particular video, we are going to be focusing on creating our wind load definitions for the walls of our enclosed building structure for wind acting on the structure in the positive X global axis direction with positive internal pressure. This process will include creating our wind definition for our windward, leeward, and side walls. Once our wind load definition is created, we will then take it a step further and apply this wind load to the areas of our structure that represent these walls. Now before we create our wind load definitions for the walls of our enclosed building structure, let's first take a look at the calculations that RAM elements will perform to arrive at the design wind pressures. RAM elements will calculate your design wind pressure according to the ASC 716 equation 27.3 dash one. Through this process, it will consider the velocity pressure, the gust factor, the external pressure coefficient, and the internal pressure coefficient. We do recommend that you have your ASC 716 available as a reference when creating your wind definition to ensure that all of your variables are entered correctly. So the first step in our workflow for generating wind loads and then applying them to our structure is to create your wind load definition. The wind load definition contains all of the code parameters that will be used to calculate design wind pressures. To start this process, go to the Home tab and the Ribbon Toolbar and then click on the Wind Definition icon. This will bring up the Wind Load Definitions dialog which will contain all of the relevant parameters for both enclosed and open structures, including the walls and roof system. For this particular course, we're going to enter all of our general parameters according to our project location and data. We're going to enter our building geometry information. and our topographical information. We're gonna go with a KZT of 1.0. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna identify the pressure type that we're working on. Each wall of your structure and the roof system will each need its own wind definition as the wind loads are calculated slightly different for each area of your structure. We're starting with our windward wall for this example, so I'll ensure that the pressure type is entered at windward. Now within the wind definition, the interior point is specified as somewhere within the building envelope. Now when a windward wall, for example, definition is assigned to a wall area, the pressure on the area will act towards the interior point. So this gives the program the information to ensure that all pressures are acting in the proper direction. And you just really need to enter a point that's within your building envelope for these fields. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the internal pressure coefficient. Here you can enter either positive or negative pressure, which will then tell the program what variables to use. For my particular building structure, I have decided to generate wind loads for both positive and negative internal pressure. And of course, additional wind definitions will be needed for that type of workflow. We'll go ahead and get to that a little bit later when we take a look at the completed model. Now once we are done entering all of our parameters, we are going to go ahead and click on the new button and then you can name your wind definition and it will take all these variables that we specified. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one wind word x for right now. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now while I'm still within this dialog and all of my parameters have been specified, I'm also going to go ahead and enter information for my leeward and sidewall information. So let's go ahead and enter that as well. 
Now all of my parameters will be the same for my leeward wall, so I'm just going to enter leeward. Let's go ahead and click on the new button, and we'll call this one leeward X. Click OK. And then in addition to that, we're also going to create our sidewall information. Let's go ahead and enter sidewalls, click on the new button, and then let's go ahead and enter sidewall X. We'll click OK. Now all of these wind definitions are located on your hard drive, wherever your program data folder is located. And we can find that information here when we enter the Browse button. Now if I were to send this file to someone else for them to be able to open, those wind definitions would go along with it and they would be able to see the wind definitions and parameters that I specified. Now once I'm done with the wind definition dialog, I can go ahead and click the close button, which will exit me out of that particular area. Now that the wind definitions for wind loads acting on the structure in the positive X direction with positive internal pressure have been created, we are ready to apply the loads to the structure. For this example, we are generating wind loads for an enclosed building structure. And as you can see, I've created load areas that represent the walls and roof for my building. Load areas and RAM elements provide you with a mechanism to distribute pressure loads to the supporting framing system. They do not provide any additional stiffness or weight to your structure. So to begin the process for assigning a wind definition to the walls, you're going to start by selecting the load case that you're currently working on. To do that, we're going to go to the status bar, select the condition pull down menu, and for this exercise, we're selecting our first wind load case. This represents wind load in the positive X direction with positive internal pressure. The next step in my workflow is to select the particular walls that I'm working on. I'm going to be working on these windward walls, which represent this plane of the structure. For this particular structure, I have gone ahead and assigned a description to each of the particular walls in the structure to make the selection process easier. In RAM elements, most entities can be assigned a description, and then entities with common descriptions can be select together using the Select by Description icon that is available in the Home tab of the Ribbon toolbar. Here I've selected all of my Windward walls. For more information on your load areas, you can go to the Areas tab in the Data panel, and here I could see all of my windward walls. If I needed to, I can change their description and the deck spanning as well. Now at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and assign a wind pressure to these walls. With the areas tab selected in the data panel, go ahead and select the surface load icon. When the surface load icon is selected, the spreadsheet tab and the ribbon toolbar will allow you to assign a wind pressure to the currently selected areas. Let's go ahead and click that icon, and then we can select the wind definition that represents these walls. And for this exercise, that is our windward X load definition. When we select our load definition, we'll be able to see all of the parameters that are appropriate for that definition. If you wanted some additional information, you can click on the Preview Report button. You'll be able to see all of your input information for that load definition, along with the design wind pressure that will then be assigned to each wall. With that design wind pressure, you'll be able to see all the variables that were calculated through that wind pressure. Now, all of these variables are officially calculated when they're assigned to a load area because several different types of load definitions would need some information from the area to finish their calculations. Let's go ahead and close out of this report. And let's finish this off by clicking OK. Here we can see that the pressure has been assigned to each of those services. If we wanted some additional information, we could select the wind load definition icon, and we can see the wind definition that was assigned. Now, each area can only have one wind load definition assigned to it for each load case. Now, 
If anything changes, you can go ahead and delete this wind pressure if you like, if you've selected an incorrect wind pressure for those. You can reassign a new wind pressure. And what is also very important is to understand that these pressure loads are calculated when they are assigned to the load areas. If anything in your wind definition changes after you assign that definition to a particular area, you should go ahead and reassign it to the area so that the pressure load can be recalculated. So say, for example, your basic wind speed changes. Go ahead and reassign that to the load area to make sure that those changes are picked up in your final design. Now, the last thing you can do uh, while you're taking a look at this is if you want to, at this point, see what that resulting load will be on your supporting framing system, you could ask the program to go ahead and distribute your load areas to tributary members. Now, this is a process that will happen automatically when you go ahead and analyze the structure, but if you wanted more information about the load values or how your load arrows were looking, you could see that they are pointing in my positive x direction. That might be a useful tool for you to go ahead and explore. Now that we've assigned our wind loads to our windward wall, let's go ahead and address the rest of the walls for wind acting on the structure in the positive x direction with positive internal pressure. Now, our wind load case stays the same since we're still working on that load case. But this time we're gonna go ahead and select one of our leeward walls. Again, I can select the rest of the walls by clicking on the by description icon. When I'm ready, I can go up to the ribbon toolbar and ask the program to assign a wind pressure. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and select my leeward X wind definition. I can finish this off by clicking OK. Let's go ahead and address our sidewalls. Now I have two sidewalls of my structure. I have one on the left and one on the right side. We do recommend addressing one sidewall at a time because what's going to happen is the program's going to consider that internal point coordinate when considering the direction of the load arrows. To ensure that the directions for each sidewall are pointing in the correct direction, we're going to select one at a time. Let's go ahead and start with the one at the left-hand side of your screen. Now you may need to zoom in and out or rotate your model to make yourself to make it easier on yourself to make that selection. So here I'm going to select my first side wall. I'm going to ask the program to assign wind pressure and I'm going to select my side wall X option. Click OK. I'm going to address my next side wall select all of them, and then say assign wind pressure. It's actually the same wind definition, but since the internal point coordinate is on one side of the wall versus the other, it will interpret the load arrows in the correct direction. The last thing I'm going to do just to check my own work is to ask the program to distribute load areas to tributary members. Here I'll be able to see my windward wall pointing in the positive x direction, my leeward wall also pointing in that direction. And here I can see my two side walls are pointing towards the outside of the structure. At this point, this concludes my process for assigning wind loads to the exterior walls of my structure, considering wind acting on the structure in the positive x direction with positive internal pressure. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.